Welcome back traders to another episode of Bull Rush Academy, where we teach you the basics of trading so that you can advance your trading knowledge and skill set. Today, we're going to cover the Fibonacci retracement. So who or what is Fibonacci? So many people are talking about it, but not a lot of people understand the background. So we're going to dive into the background of Fibonacci and then show you how you can apply this to your trading. The Fibonacci sequence is named after Leonardo Pizzano, who's a 13th century mathematician who was based out of Italy. He is largely credited for it, and his nickname is Fibonacci, and that's the reason, hence the Fibonacci retracement. However, he was not the one that originally discovered the Fibonacci sequence number. It was rather in 200 BC in India is the first signs of these numbers showing up in any sort of textbook or written information. He though is largely given credit though because he brought it to the Western world. So let's dive in and go into some detail about what Fibonacci actually is. The Fibonacci sequence is a sequence of number in which the prior two numbers is the sum of the current number. For example, the sequence can go one, one, two, one, two, three, two, three, five, and so on and so forth. So again, it is one, one, two, three, five, eight, 13, 21, so on and so forth. You get the gist. You take the prior two numbers and you add them together, which gives you the current number. One, one equals two, one, two equals three, two, three equals five, three, five equals eight, and so on and so forth. So why is this honestly so interesting? Well, it's interesting because this sequence of numbers shows up all over in nature naturally, whether it's pine cones or pineapples, you'll see the sequence of numbers and points on those that show up naturally. Leaves, you go down the list and you see this all over the place and it's repetitive in nature, which somewhat ties it back to trading in that sense of a lot of times history repeats itself, especially in trading and especially when you start talking about technical analysis in the trading environment. Typically, when you see the sequence of numbers, it shows up in a pattern. You'll see a nice spiral pattern. So if you're looking at a pine cone, for example, you'll see different pine cone spirals. And within that spiral, you're gonna see the additional numbers show up. So enough with the history lesson. Let's show you how you can actually apply this to your trading and help advance your knowledge and just have it as a tool in your arsenal when you're making your trading decisions and trying to win a bull rush trading competition. In trading, there's a lot of uses for Fibonacci sequence numbers, but the ones that we're going to focus on today are specifically the Fibonacci retracement, as that's the most commonly used in trading. The Fibonacci retracement is a series of levels on your charts that is based off the Fibonacci sequence. After a large move in the financial markets, it will typically show you areas of support and resistance where the product might retrace back to. Traders determine these levels by calculating the percentage of price movement and then applying that to the Fibonacci sequence number of where the product might retrace back to. The most commonly used ones are 23.8, 38.2, and 61.8%. 50% is also thrown into the sequence when you're talking about Fibonacci retracement. No, 50% is not a Fibonacci sequence number. However, due to the psychological impact that it has, and many traders believe that it has, it has been added in there because of the psychological benefits that it could provide. A lot of times you'll see the market come back 50% and then start making a move after that. And so all traders have it in there by default. So now we're gonna dive into some charts and show you how to apply this to your trading. So I'm using the Bull Rush platform today to go over this, but all major platforms will have the Fibonacci numbers and Fibonacci retracement built into them. So for this one, you'll see it here on the left-hand toolbar if you're on the Bull Rush platform and you simply click it and then you'll see the different ones there. So th they actually have an entire list of Fibonacci tools based on the Fibonacci sequence numbers. However, again, today we're gonna focus on the Fibonacci retracement and then going to build from there. And we'll have additional videos in the future that go on the areas. So once you have your tool, you simply find the lowest area on the chart and you go to the highest area. It's important to note that there has to be a move for it to occur where if it's just trading sideways, this tool does not work the best. You need a real move in the market. So I'm using Bitcoin on a weekly chart right now to display this. 
And what you do is you go from the lowest point and you simply click and drag it to the highest point and extend it so that you can see into the future and then drop it. And so now my Fibonacci numbers are set and you can see the different areas automatically do this. So again, all charts will do this for you on any of the charting platforms. Bullrush happens to use the trading view charts inside of our system. So it makes it really easy with their tools. And you can see the numbers that we had previously talked about 23.6, 38.2, 50%. And then there's some additional ones, 61.8, 78.6. And the idea is that after the move and it starts to consolidate, you go draw the lines and then you'll notice that a lot of times you see pretty big movements off of those lines. So here you have 23.6. You can see it came down and tested it once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times, and then finally on the seventh time it broke through. So you can really see this Fibonacci sequence numbers hold true to that support level right here. And so this is a really good example of how to apply that. And so once the market moves up and it starts to consolidate a little bit after the second or third week, that's when you draw your line and then you have your lines in there. And then the idea is that this is a support area. So if it comes da back down to this area, you then look to go buy the product or you wait for it to break through and you go look to sell it. It's important to note that numbers aren't perfect. And so when we think about Fibonacci retracement and the, the numbers of 23.6, 38.2 as a retracement, you wanna think of them in ranges. You can see here, if we zoom in, it doesn't perfectly hit this line any of those times with the exception of this one right here. What it does is it goes within that range and then it moves up or down based off of that. And so you can see that in each one of these. And so when you're thinking about this, make sure you take that into consideration and don't just put your entry price right there on that line, either put it a little bit above or a little bit below. And a large part and the reason why you see that these days is because of, again, going back to the psychological aspect of this, where a lot of traders do in fact use Fibonacci's when they're making their trading decisions. And so you'll see a lot of people specifically go and try to run stops at that point or not let it get there and try to hold it above because they understand the psychological impact that it has. So any of the market makers out there um, and anybody trading any of the exchange trader products where their orders do have an impact, um, you can go and see that. And so it's important that you go and you don't put things exactly at that. You think of it more as a range. And so again, the idea is when it hits off of the number and the support, it will bounce back up and it'll give you an opportunity. And so we saw that here in the seven. And then the same thing happens here when we go to the 38.2. It came, it tried to go through that area, got rejected pretty aggressively, and now it's heading back up. And so down here was where you would want to have your, your buy entries in the hopes that it goes back up to the top. This is just one chart. We will take a look at a few other charts to give a few more examples. So here we've pulled up an hourly of the Euro USD. We will go and find our Fibonacci retracement. We are at the high point here. We will go to the low point down here. And you can see we have done that. So we can we drew it specifically because it's starting to consolidate. It went down there, got rejected, and has started to consolidate over the last few hours, which gives me confidence that I can go and start projecting where this will ultimately head. And what's really helpful here, if you look at this chart, at the 23.6, it's already consolidated on that area. And so this just adds further resistance now that we're going back up. So remember, if it's coming down into it, you're talking about a support level. If it's going back up, you're talking about a resistance level. And so when we look at this, this is a resistance level and it's not only do we have the 23.6 helping us, we also have a consolidated area where the chart has already been. And so you'll notice this a lot uh, throughout the chart patterns. And in this example, it's actually happened at every single one of those levels. So you have it at 38.2, you see a lot of consolidation. You have it at the 50%, you're seeing a lot of consolidation. The 61.8%, you're seeing a lot of consolidation. Um, and so it's just a really helpful tool in addition to the lines. The idea is that the charts will continue to move and we will expect to see it go this way 
we would expect to see it either consolidate here and get rejected. If it doesn't consolidate there and get rejected, then you'll see a move up a little bit. And the expectation would be that the next area is gonna go to 38.2. And so once it goes up, if it's hanging out in this area, you may look and consider to do buys at that point because the idea is based on the Fibonacci retracement that once it breaks through this area of resistance, it now turns into support on its way to the next level. And so if it's hanging out in between these two areas and it comes back down to 23.6, you may consider buying and holding until it goes to the 38.2, at which point you would look to take your profit at that point. Then if it continues through there and goes to the 50 and then gets rejected hard. So say it goes through a little bit and then comes down and gets rejected and consolidates in this area. Now you'd be looking for a move all the way back down to where it originally started from and then extensions. And so in a later video, we'll talk about Fibonacci extensions, but we would look for that to continue far past where it initially stopped in the first place. And so you see a lot of these, these patterns in the market where markets just don't move in straight lines like this. They move in waves. So up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, et cetera. Um, and Elliott wave is one of the biggest ones when we talk about waves, which again, we'll cover in a later video. But for this purpose, just keep in mind that the markets don't move in a single straight direction. They move up, down, up, down, up, down um, over a period of time. And you have to understand the general direction or trend of the market. So that's it for this video. Welcome again to Borosh Academy. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial. We look to see you back in the future as we look to cover the Fibonacci extension and the other tools within the trading industry. Again, our goal is to help provide the education from a basic beginner level so you can go and advance your trading skill set to go and join a bull rush competition. We look forward to seeing you trading soon and competing and winning and being at the top of our leaderboard. Remember, trade, compete, and win with bull rush. Thank you.